We need some titanium drag blocks under this thing. Welcome back to the channel. It's Wednesday and uh, we're running late as usual. Uh, it's Monday night about 11 o'clock. Uh, getting started on Wednesday's video and it's going to be more mini truck stuff. Uh, got to wrap up Joseph's truck. We got to get the body uh, finalized mounting wise. Uh, do a few modifications to the suspension. It's already been done on this truck. Uh, there's already a video on it but uh, we are running a little bit short on the not short on content, but short on time. So, uh, mini nats, we're leaving next week for that. So, uh, gotta get this thing wrapped up. And we've been busy at night uh, at the shop trying to get one of our buddies' real trucks uh, roadworthy and uh, at least safe for travel for the show. They haven't taken that truck anywhere uh, yet. So, uh, no video of that. Um, we're just patching up somebody else's work and trying to make it a lot more safe uh, for them to drive. So, uh still no microphone microphone will be here tomorrow um so hope you can hear this so uh, anyways we're gonna hop in the studio we're gonna start doing a suspension work on this thing and uh get the body finalized and then give joseph his truck back because he hasn't seen it in person yet he's seen the same video as y'all saw so he hasn't seen it uh i'm not going to take it to him until we're done 100 percent. so i uh, hope they'll have this thing wrapped up by wednesday morning and he can have it at work so Anyways, let's go in the studio and start doing suspension work. All right, back in the studio. And uh, just like we did on my truck, we got to use the uh, Dubro ball links. Uh, we have to get the servo horn even with the top of the servo and have the car laid out at the same time. So we'll have to uh, shorten this shock quite a bit. There's not enough, uh, as I explained on mine, there's not enough uh, room in this shock to shorten the shock enough. So uh, we're going to replace the shock with a solid rod what we're going to make out of the ball links. Uh, the front end modifications, uh, we will be putting adjustable turnbuckles and uh, moving this in a quarter inch to get the ball link and the ball stud inside of the wheel. That helps with the toe out when it's, or toe in when it's laid out. And you don't get as much dramatic uh, toe change when it's, uh, when you move that in. You might lose a little bit of steering radius, but we're not worried about that because we're not really going fast. We're just kind of putting around anyway, so. We will be doing the same modification there using, uh, we could be using Dubro on that as well, but uh, I'm going to do it just like I did on mine. we got the RPM ball ends, uh, inch and a half titanium turnbuckles, and which is kind of overkill. You could probably just use some all thread and uh, some little ball studs from Custom Works. Custom Works or Associated, uh, the standard Associated like an RC10 would work fine. Uh, but before we dig into that, we did get our MST adjustable offset wheels. Uh, they're not in here, obviously. Um, we got the hoops and the Chrome five stars. These things here, I don't know if there's a trick to it, but, uh, I ended up crushing one of them trying to get it out. They're so super tight when they're in this wheel. Cause you got a little groove on the back side of the rim. You got like four settings for offsets. And there's a little slot right here that slides in that groove. Um, they fit really nice, but they're super tight. And I think it's partially due to the chrome coating. Uh, these are the painted wheels. They do make a silver hoop and a painted center. I imagine they got better clearance. Uh, I got two out by pushing on them with quite a bit of force. Uh, the third one I broke. I ended up trying to heat the fourth one. See if I could loosen the hoop up. With the hair dryer, didn't get it crazy hot, but just tried to heat it up. And uh, that didn't seem to help either. I ended up getting a little block of wood and just tapping it out. But uh, if I had to adjust these more than once, I would probably not want to use these. My, my personal opinion. But they, they do look really cool. And they're not very expensive. They're only like 15 bucks a set. Uh, but we are going to use the uh, billet centers that Kevin sent us out last week. Uh, we do have to paint these. Uh, we got the little center cap and the center hoop of the wheel. Whoever designed these, designed them to work with these hoops. And they actually fit better than the factory ones, in my opinion. But they don't have any coating on them. But uh, check it out. There's some little baby billets. And I uh, will be using these in the future. Uh, possibly on the Square Body Ranger. That would look awesome. So, uh, 
But to use this body, we're going to have to shorten the, two, uh, the chassis or the rear suspension because we tried to use this on Joseph's truck. And uh, in the time crunch we got right now, we don't have time to do all the customization on his suspension uh, to shorten the wheelbase. So future project, square body Ranger with billets. It's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're not sick of mini truck stuff yet, I hope not because uh, next week um, we will be heading out next Wednesday or Thursday for the show. And you're going to get bombarded with mini truck videos for a week or two. Uh, but in the meantime, let's do some more mini truck stuff. We're going to get on this suspension, get his body finalized, and uh, that'll be pretty much for this week. Uh, next week, we need to get back on the lunchbox, of course. Uh, if time allows, we're going to a short week next week. We're going to be in town for like three days before we get to uh, head out to the mountains. So... Uh, Hopefully we get that thing wrapped up soon. That's going to be a little complex paint job. It's got to be base coat, clear coat, so I'll have to do some of that at work. So, Anyways, enough babbling. Let's do this. All right, guys, we're back in the studio tonight, Tuesday night. I uh, got a microphone. I hope it stays charged. Uh, first things first, uh, we took the rear wheels off. I uh, went ahead and took the dry pins out, put them safe so we won't lose them. And that way we don't have to fight with them, keep falling out, uh, and or put the nut back on the axle. But... Uh, Tonight we have to get the servo horn level, and we're going to take the shock off, and we need the car to be laid out about that low, but with the servo straight, so we're going to have to use our new bro ball ends. I'll probably have to cut them, and uh, we're going to connect those two together with uh, these little 440 set screws. Uh, you can use the screw and just cut the head off, but uh, these long set screws come out of my pan car stuff. Uh, they're easier to manage because they got a hex or a hex drive on them, so you can uh, run them up in the ball ends without having to fight it. So uh, let me go grab. I might have. I got tools over here. Talking about going grabbing tools. I got tools right here. All this is pretty much uh, a repeat of what we did on mine. So if you've seen mine, I apologize. I'm running short on time to get this thing done this week or have a video for Tuesday or Wednesday. So, uh, you get what you get tonight. I could probably time lapse most of this because it's uh, not super interesting. We may have to drill those out since we got a little bit bigger ball ends. We got 440s. I'm pretty sure that's what I used on mine. Been a whole week ago, I can't remember. All right, uh, we got the servo horn level. We'll have to adjust the endpoints in the radio, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and strap the rear end up uh, to where it's laid out completely against the frame rails. And we're gonna measure this distance right here, and that's how long we're gonna make our two ball ends. And then that way the truck is laid completely out, can't go any further with the servo horns level with the servos. All right, we just strapped the rear end up with a zip tie. Actually, took two zip ties. Uh, to keep it from flopping around, make it a little bit easier on us, and uh, let's measure the distance between these two holes here. And we are going to be approximately 30 millimeters, 30.3. So that's the distance we need to make our two ball ends, and uh. Yeah, we'll have to cut those pretty much in half because one of them is, uh, see, one of them itself is 25. We need 30 with two of them. So let's get to cutting. All right, simple math. Uh, we just took uh, to the center of the hole approximately 15 millimeters. Don't have to be exact. Uh, if it's a little bit shorter, it'd be okay because that way you can adjust it out. Um, so we're 15 millimeters from the center of the hole to the end of the ball end, and we still got plenty of room there to put our threads in so it's not going to bust through. So uh, simply just run the screw in and tie them together and make it uh, hopefully 30 millimeters between the two holes. All right, we got it cut down. Um, scoot you up. We measured uh, 15 millimeters from the center of the hole to the end of the ball end. Still got plenty of material here on the end to get our threads in and not. Uh, bottom it out and uh, crush the um, the ball end or going through and making it all kinds of weird because if you run that screw in too deep it's going to get bent or it's going to try to drill its way through 
So uh, I just grabbed the wrong wrench, so I'll be right back. Got to get a .5, not a 16th. All right, we got one side done. I ended up uh, drilling this hole a little bit oversized just to fit the 440 screws because the screws that come with the shocks are tiny, two millimeter. Could have probably got away with 256 rod ends, uh, but since we got 440s, that's what we're using. Uh, didn't want to put the small screws back in there because they would have rattled around too much. So uh, there it is, zip tied, servos flat, and that's how it's going to lay. So we're just going to get this other side started. And then the rear is complete, minus adjusting the radio to get the end points right. And then we'll jump on the front. That's going to go pretty quick and easy. And then uh, got to mount the body up. All right, we're back. We're going to start on the front. Uh, simply just start by pulling off the uh, factory linkages, which is just a little plastic piece. Got to bend up there. And uh, we're going to save all of his leftover parts just in case there's nothing on here that's irreversible. Uh, you would need new spindles or steering blocks, whatever you want to call them, uh, if you wanted to go back 100% stock because we're getting ready to shorten these about a quarter inch. And uh, we're also going to have to drill the steering rack slightly larger because these are like two and a half millimeter and we're putting 440 uh, size um, ball ends or ball studs. So there's the removal of the factory parts. Uh, simply going to remove this hole a quarter inch forward. Oh, the stub axle just fell out. Got to not lose our pins and axles fall out. But anyways, um, we're going to move this hole forward approximately a quarter inch. About there-ish. And uh, we'll chop that off. That'll allow the wheel to go all the way in. It'll also help with the, the toe out when the car's laid out. It'll actually stay straight. And it don't get dramatically weird when it goes up. You would think if it's uh, if it was going to tow out, it would start to, or if it was towed in when it was laid out, you'd think it would start to tow out when it was aired up. But uh, by changing that geometry right there, it stays pretty close to straight all the way through the whole motion. So um, wasn't by design. It was just by luck, I guess, and it worked out. So anyways, uh, we're going to drill this hole, drill this out slightly, install the... Custom Works ball studs uh, could be associated by uh, Custom Works, whoever makes one this size. You could also use the Dubro linkages on here if you wanted to. Um, I didn't on mine just because uh, I had these in my box. <clears throat> Since it worked on mine, we're going to do it on his too. So, Along with that, we used the inch and a half titanium uh, turnbuckles. Uh, overkill, but uh, it was shiny. So you could use threaded rod, be fine. Or you can, Dubro also makes a uh, universal uh, turnbuckle set. It's only like six bucks or less. And you could use it. You just have to cut it down because it's a little bit long. It's universal. It's that long. Uh, okay. Anyways, we're going to drill holes, install ball studs, and then uh, we start throwing the wheels back on. Once the wheels are on, body post. And then we'll get the body on and we'll be done. All right, not a lot of science here, not measuring really anyways. Um, there's a rib on this steering block, and it ends, and then it's just a blank spot. We're drilling it right at the end of that little rib right there. That's our approximate quarter inch of shortening. All right, there is your hole in relation to the factory hole. We'll just take off that excess, and uh, we're done with the front end modifications. All right, we got one side completed. Uh, simply just took the uh, sanding drum. It's not even a sanding drum. It's actually a stone on the Dremel. And uh, just sanded away the excess material. That little leg right there. It's pretty simple. Uh, less dangerous. You can kind of smooth it into it. You don't just chop it off. There you go. Don't get too carried away and take too much material away. You need a little meat on there for that bolt to a little ball stud and nut to hold on to. But uh, there you go. So got some material on the end. We did get this hole a little bit off center, but that's fine. Uh, this one looks a little bit better. I'm sure it's like a $2 part if we did mess it up, but uh, that's going to function just fine. 
And uh, anyways, now all we got to do is make up our RPM ball ends and our turnbuckles and uh, do an eyeball alignment on this thing. And then uh, we're ready to put the body on. All right, I should have watched my own video. I uh, should have got inch long turnbuckles instead of inch and a half. So we got to do a little slicey slicey on these and uh, trim them down just about an eighth inch. All right, we're going to let that cool off, flip them over, do the same thing on the other side. Take them about an eighth off each side to get it down to one inch. And, uh, yeah, lesson learned. Should have watched my own video. I didn't know what to do. So let's let that cool off. We'll come back and cut the other side off and uh, proceed with this project. All right, uh, there we have it. Everything's laid out. We got the steering linkages after uh, doing a little slice and dice on them. Uh, one inch, not inch and a half. Uh, that was a bad uh, guess on my part. So uh, <clears throat> that's complete. We got uh, rollage, good tow when the car is completely laid out. And we still have adjustability to go in and out if we need to. But just from eyeballing it, that's, uh, that's a pretty good alignment right there. So uh, we're going to have to throw the trunk back in, the fuel cell area. And uh, I will have to trim some of this off for that truck body to fit. And uh, we're going to use this area. Uh, actually, no, we're not. Uh, I'm just going to run the body post back here. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need to chop it up. So uh, we'll preserve that for future use. And uh, we'll just run the body post back here with the pads on it. Body post in the front with the pads. And we'll Velcro it for now. He may future uh, in the future do magnets. But for now, uh, we're going to keep it simple and Velcro it. So uh, let me grab those posts and we'll start the, that process. All right, if you bought one of these things, uh, they give you a lot of options here. Um, there's a battery adapter for all things, a Tamiya plug. Uh, Red Cat to Tamiya. I don't, don't, don't many people are going to be using that, so... Anywho, uh, you got these extra long body posts, long body posts, some really short body posts, and somewhere in the middle body posts. Um, I like these things because they are plumb full of holes. Uh, you can kind of see it. You got infinite adjustment there. And you simply put this little thingamajobber on there, and then your pad goes onto that. And there's where you put your Velcro or magnet. Uh, magnets probably would be better in this situation, but we're Velcroing it because that's what we have. So we'll have to cut the nibs off of uh, two of them anyways. So go ahead and get these installed in the front. I'm going to cut them down kind of generically a little bit tall. Because we do have these, uh, these pieces going on there. So we got to factor in that much height too. So uh, let's get doing that. And... Uh, we're at the finish line before we know it here. All right, guys. Uh, microphone is still on. Wow, look at that. <clears throat> we got it wrapped up. I uh, used the uh, sort of long ones and cut about three quarters of them off. At least that much was cut off, more than we actually used. And uh, this little sleeve that comes with the front, or the comes with several sleeves, uh, but comes with four um the front one or wherever you decide to use it has uh four holes in it so you can adjust it slide up and down quite a bit more uh the other one actually only has one hole and yeah it comes with four so you get four of them this has got one hole this one's got four you can adjust it up and down we end up using the stubby body post in the back. We still had to trim them down to get them even with the top of the servo. Uh, this body's a little bit taller than my Toyota, so we didn't need to be exactly flat on the servo. So uh, we were able to get it just above it, as you can see right there. And these do swivel a little bit. Uh, you can tighten them up. That one's a little loose. Um, makes it a little more controllable if they're tightened up. But uh, now all we simply have to do is we're going to put a couple pieces of aluminum tape in the body just to protect the paint. And uh, this is all lacquer, so I'm not worried about it being dry enough because it's been painted since uh, Saturday, 
because y'all Sunday morning actually because y'all seen that video. Um, so uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was recorded Saturday and Sunday and posted Sunday. So we're going to put a couple strips of aluminum tape in the body, put the fuzzy side of the Velcro on there, and then we'll be ready to wrap this thing up. All right, uh, wrapping it up. Uh, we got our Velcro on the car, Velcro on the body. Um, like I said in my video, my brother works at a air aviation uh, interior place. And I've had this stuff for probably uh, 10, 15 years. I'm not sure what brand it is, but there's YKK on the back of this uh, pull tape or the transfer tape. And it's uh, good stuff. Very strong, very sticky. Uh, what we did is put the 3M, you see it under there. That is uh, 3340 aluminum tape. I got it at Lowe's. Uh, simply put that inside the body to protect the paint. We took uh, put two rows of Velcro just so we could have a little room to a wiggle room as far as we go adjusting wise. Again, just like on the Blazer or the Jam and Jimmy, uh, we may go back and add a pad all the way across if you don't do magnets so it has more surface on the car itself. But no faster when you drive these things just cruising around. That's plenty. Uh, so far, it's, it's proved to work out pretty good. So, anywho, uh, let's set this thing on there and see how she looks. It's uh, like extra body drop because this body being so much taller, uh, the body is hanging down way lower than it needs to be. So, that's not a problem because uh, we got adjustable suspension. So, we can get that uh, tuned in with the endpoints. Boom, there we go. Check that out. I can put my finger under there and the body's uh, still touching the ground. So she's slammed. Um, easy enough to adjust the endpoints on the suspension. Just uh, we got that much travel, so that's not going to be a problem at all. Let's set it on the ground under its own weight here. That's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. I do like it narrower. Uh, get more steering radius. I know a lot of people don't like flat wheels, but I prefer flat wheels on a mini truck um, Deep dish in the back is cool, but uh, I prefer a flat wheel just because I guess it's just old-school um, Anyways, there's Joseph's truck. He wanted to be a part of this build uh, But with scheduling and uh, this week's been crazy uh, Trying to get uh, the other real truck uh, road worthy for the show He hadn't had time to come out here and uh, because we had to work at the shop uh, at work Saturday, and he wanted to come up here Saturday and do this. But all right, there you have it. Uh, There's another mini truck video in the books. Uh, soon we'll be working on the custom paint job for the pumpkin. I have uh, started sanding on the old glitter body here, so I got to get it all smoothed up before we put any candy on it. And uh, that will be coming soon. But the next week we're leaving Wednesday, Thursday for the show. And there's going to be a, lots of videos coming from that show. Uh, maybe some unscheduled stuff. Just kind of putting it out there because that's going to be a big deal. Weather is kind of up and down. So far it's looking pretty good. Only about 40% chance of rain on Friday, I think, or Saturday. So it's getting better every day. So uh, that's going to be awesome. We will have running videos of these, including the Blazer, my truck, maybe the Mazda. I was hoping to have a trailer for that weekend, but uh, it didn't fit in the budget. Uh, I had to pay for them wheels I got from Kevin. So once I get those, uh, that pretty much canceled out my trailer money. So uh, anywho, I appreciate it. Uh, if you hadn't, uh, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you Sunday with uh, something. Not sure what. It's always something new here. Uh, not a lot of planning. Just kind of off the hip. So anyways, there's another mini truck. And we'll see you Sunday. Thanks. <music>